Section 12 of Selected Interviews with Robert G. Ingersoll, Volume 1. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Interviewer's Questions, read by Michelle Fry, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ingersoll's Responses, read by Claudia Salto. Interview Title, The Sunday Laws of Pittsburgh. Published in The Leader, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, October 27, 1879 first question colonel what do you think of the course the mayor has pursued toward you in attempting to stop your lecture ingersoll's answer i know very little except what i have seen in the morning paper as a general rule laws should be enforced or repealed and so far as i am personally concerned i shall not so much complain of the enforcing of the law against sabbath breaking as of the fact that such a law exists we have fallen heir to these laws they were passed by superstition and the enlightened people of to-day should repeal them ministers should not expect to fill their churches by shutting up other places they can only increase their congregations by improving their sermons they will have more hearers when they say more worth hearing i have no idea that the mayor has any prejudice against me personally and if he only enforces the law i shall have none against him if my lectures were free the ministers might have the right to object but as i charge one dollar admission and they nothing they ought certainly be able to compete with me don't you think it is the duty of the mayor as chief executive of the city laws to enforce the ordinances and pay no attention to what the statutes say i suppose it to be the duty of the mayor to enforce the ordinance of the city and if the ordinance of the city covers the same ground as the law of the state a conviction under the ordinance would be a bar to prosecution under the state law if the ordinance exempts scientific literary and historical lectures as it says it does will not that exempt you yes all my lectures are historical that is i speak of many things that have happened they are scientific because they are filled with facts and they are literary of course i can conceive of no address that is neither historical nor scientific except sermons they fail to be historical because they treat of things that never happened and they are certainly not scientific as they contain no facts suppose they arrest you what will you do i will examine the law and if convicted will pay the fine unless i think i can reverse the case by appeal of course i would like to see all these foolish laws wiped from the statute books i want the law so that everybody can do just as he pleases on sunday provided he does not interfere with the rights of others i want the christian the jew the deist and the atheist to be exactly equal before the law I would fight for the right of the Christian to worship God in his own way just as quick as I would for the atheist to enjoy music, flowers, and fields. I hope to see the time when even the poor people can hear the music of the finest operas on Sunday. One grand opera with all its thrilling tones will do more good in touching and elevating the world than ten thousand sermons on the agonies of hell. Have you ever been interfered with before in delivering Sunday lectures? No, I postponed a lecture in Baltimore 
at the request of the owners of the theatre because they were afraid some action might be taken that is the only case i have delivered lectures on sunday in the principal cities of the united states in new york boston buffalo chicago san francisco cincinnati and many other places i lectured here last winter it was on sunday and i heard nothing of its being contrary to law i always supposed my lectures were good enough to be delivered on the most sacred days End of the Sunday Laws of Pittsburgh Footnote The manager of the theater where Colonel Ingersoll lectured was fined $50, which Colonel Ingersoll paid.